Right, in my um, last video I showed you a quick setup where you can actually hold a four-jaw chuck um, in the three-jaw chuck on the Chinese mini lathe, um, saving having to uh, actually change the chuck on the actual spindle. So this video is a bit of an update um, to that one um, and this is a much safer method I've got here now with the addition of a drawbar. Plus I've included the 24 hole indexing ring and made a quick release handle um, for doing um, screw tapping on the lathe. Now in that video I showed um, how I made this um, back plate here and actually held this chuck in the um, mini lay 3 jaw um, and I've always used this one for um, one-off components um, just where I need a quick um, four jaw setup. And this is the actual four inch um, four jaw chuck that actually came with the mini lathe. Um, I've got this one here that I've used sometimes. This is a five inch chuck. Um, it's quite hollow at the back here, um, so it's very lightweight and it's um, quite narrow, um, which gives you plenty of room on the actual lathe bed. Um, this chuck came with a adapter here that screws in the back. Um, I think the chuck may have come off of a Drummond lathe. Um, what I've done with this um, adapter here, I've drilled it and tapped it for 8mm. So I've got a length of um, studding, 8mm, and that one screws um, through the adapter. And then I put a um, split washer on there and the 8mm nut and then screw that one up nice and tight to lock that up and if I use any um, studding for draw bars on the unused threads I normally spray it red so that I don't get it mixed up with any other um, threading stock so the adapter screws into the back of that one And you'd obviously hold that in the um, three jaw chuck and use a adjustable spanner on there and give it a nip up or tighten it as um, tight as possible. And then this one is fed down through the spindle. Um, firstly, this one would be inserted in the back and I've put um, two O-rings in there which hold it nice and tight in the spindle um, so that you can actually push this um, up the uh, mandrel and then hold this one with two hands uh, and feed that one down through and it won't actually um, push this one out the back. So that's what it would look like um, in the machine and then use another split washer on the back and uh, stainless steel 8mm nut or one of these um, nylock nuts with the nylon insert which locks up and won't come loose. And then I've made the handle out of a piece of round bar and bored that one out. Um, this is from a um, fire poker again off of a companion set. They make lovely little handles with a 6mm um, bolt right the way through. Um, there's a peg on there again like I have on my other indexing system. And then that one would go over the nut and onto that um, diameter there and into the hole for actually turning and you can obviously use this for um, screw tapping on the lathe. So once you've made one of these up um, you can actually use it for other things apart from the um, four jaw chuck you can use it for face plates or whatever and um, you can see there I've done the 24 hole indexing system and I've numbered all those up with the um, number stamps. And from the back it looks like that with the hole to locate the handle so it's quick release. And if you're making one of these obviously make that diameter there um, bigger than the actual um, 8mm nut. 
I've actually made um, the diameter on that one to um, 0.637 thou. And if you um, want one of these um, indexing rings uh, and handle systems, but you don't want to use a drawbar method or the forge or chuck method that I'm shown here, um, you can uh, see my other video where I've made this ordinary expanding mandrel type up. So on the machine, this one is pushed up the back. And that one's, like I say, that's nice and tight. It wouldn't even come out um, if the machine was running and there was nothing holding it in there. Um, and like I say, you can actually hold this one with two hands then and guide the um, thread down through that hole and into the um, chuck. And I always put number one... Um, draw over the um, marker there and then do that one up just a little bit loose at first and then the split wash on the back and the stainless steel nut and then tighten that one up And there's absolutely no way that that chuck can come out now and then just tighten that chuck up so that's the view at the back of the machine and I have the pin uh, which locates in the holes for the indexing work Plus I have the quick release handle for screw tapping on the lathe and if you actually use one of these for screw tapping um, you have much more feel over the work and um, save um, breaking a lot of taps. So like I say um, having the draw bar takes away all the fear of um, this um, chuck coming out of the um, three jaw chuck or working loose um, is perfectly acceptable in machining um, practices to actually use this method um, many years ago I used this um, on CNC machines and uh, manual center lathes uh, often holding a chuck within another chuck plus using this method won't do any um, damage to the actual um, bearings in the lathe um, I've used this method, like I say, for many years with the ordinary um, standard uh, bearings that came with the machine, the um, ball race type. Um, I have changed to the tapered roller bearings, which are much more um, suited to lathe work. And if you ever get the chance of doing that, it's well worth doing. And just for an example, I'm going to turn this piece of um, square mild steel, I'm going to make it into a um, boring bar. Um, and you can see there's quite a bit of overhang, um, but it won't be any problem at all with this setup. And um, incidentally, some time ago I showed um, using the um, power feed and I said about the noisy um, gears at the back. 
I found the best um, actual substance to go on the um, nylon gears is um, silicon lubricant grease. If you smother them in that, they won't make hardly any noise uh, different to the actual um, ordinary running. So this is without the gears. And this is with the drive. So you can see there's no sound difference at all if you actually use that silicon grease. So I just used that as an example to show you how rigid it is and how safe it is to use. Um, normally I'd put a centre drill in there and actually use um, a live centre.
and you can see there that I'm doing intermittent cutting and it's um, no problem at all for these um, Chinese um, inserts. So you can see there is a really great setup and one which will save you um, no end of time if you actually do this one. And just before I go, um, I'd just like to show you something of interest. You can see um, down here on the spindle at the front of the headstock there that there's a nice show of oil coming out the front of there. Um, when I did this upgrade here um, for uh, the oil ports to oil the gears inside, I can actually use my um, oil can to fire a nice thick solution of um, oil and molybdenum disulfide right down into the bearing. So I know that those bearings are nicely lubricated. So if you get the chance, it's well worth um, doing this upgrade.